Well, I want to read um, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And then it says, Salah. It says, just stop and let it sink in. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Salah. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Lord, we are so aware that, uh, Lord, we need you to, to open your word to us, to, to speak to our hearts, to, Lord, open our hearts so that we can hear. Open our ears, our eyes, Lord, that we can see and we can hear what you have to say, Lord. Lord, that we are still and know that you are God. Lord, we pray this morning, speak to us, Lord. Lord, if you do not speak, Lord, Lord, who can we listen to? Lord, you have the words of eternal life. And that's why we want, to, we want to listen to you, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I, I don't know if I know, if, you know, some of you I don't know. Uh, some of you won't know me, maybe. Um, I'm Werner Ewald, and JP said to me, you know, I put stop up there. And he actually didn't want us to stop. He wanted us to dance. And he was really trying to get us to, to dance, you know. And here I'm saying, stop. So I'm not sure. He's, he, he, this week he already said to me, no, don't stop. Don't let the people stop. But I want to um, speak to you this morning about Psalm 46 and what it uh, suddenly meant to me, um, and verse 10 kind of jumps out. You know, I, I think when, it's, when you say, be still and know that I am God, it's kind of just kind of suddenly gives you something in your spirit that, uh, that is special, you know. Um, and I want to share an experience with you just shortly and, and to share what, um, why the psalm suddenly means so much more to me um, and it's I know it's like a little bit of a you know I can say it, a war story you know my children would say oh he starts again with his war stories but uh, I, I will show you a picture there you know um, 74 days ago <laughs> I was uh, early in the morning about quarter to seven as I do the last 10 or 12 years already I cycle to work, you know, and uh, I cycle the same way, you know, every day. And uh, that morning I cycled along that path like I always cycle. Now it's not so easy to see, but in the, behind that traffic sign there's a little red circle there. 
And there's some interlocks that, that lifted up, you know, and I was trying to avoid them as I was, it was misty and wet and I was going to the left of them and as my wife would always say, you were going too fast again. And uh, as I looked up, I saw the back of that traffic sign there about half a meter in front of me and I knew I'm not going to be able to get out of the way of this one and I, I fell on the interlocks there and uh, with a bang or something, I'm not sure how with the sign there exactly what happened but uh, I fell and I was lying there and uh, you know, you want to quickly get up, hope that nobody saw this, you know, and, uh, but I, as I tried, I said, oh, I can't. And within, it, it must have been, you know, two minutes or so, you know, I felt a hand on my shoulder and uh, somebody saying, Muni opstani. It's just, don't get up. There's blood dripping out of your helmet. Uh, maybe your neck is, you know, just, just stay on the ground. And, uh, and then that person started praying. You know, and I, I thought, Lord, is this an angel? Or what is this? <laughs> you know, it was so special. It was so amazing that here I'm lying on the on the on the pathway and I just want to get up and I can't and here's somebody praying for me and uh, you know I I didn't know who the person was and then I somebody else stopped it was still a bit dark you know lights and people hooting because cars stopping in the road and and then she asked me you know who must we let who must we inform and I said, my friend just stays, you know, like these two houses in front on the beach there, the second house. And she told the other person to go and to go there and, and tell my friend. And she called the ambulance and uh, this guy knocked on my friend's door and he was still like half in the sleep, you know, and he came to the door and the guy said, he said, yeah, what do you want? And I said, nee, that's what, oh, man, gefall da. I'm at the feet. And I, okay, then he came out and he kind of said, what must he do with this old man? You know, so anyway, he came out and he saw I was lying there. And anyway, and then um, picked me up and they brought me to hospital. And then I was, the next slide there, that's what uh, a day later, um, I mean, my, my hip was cracked, my pelvic bone is cracked, and ribs are broken, and ligaments are off in the shoulder, and so now I, I have to lie four, four weeks on a, on a bed with a weight on my leg, and uh, I know it's, a lot of you have gone through much worse than this, but I, I just want to tell you the story, how I, Psalm 46, you know, it's just a bit of background, but um, and I also want to say thank you to a lot of you, um, you know, um, but here I'm lying now in this bed and I say, I may not move, I may not get out of this bed for, you know, four weeks now. So I know everything has to happen in this bed now. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not used to this, you know. I, and the first person that comes in, you know, says, no, he needs to wash me now. And I, I'm thinking, I ask him, yeah, what's your name? He says, MacGyver. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, MacGyver's got tools, you know, like knives. And I was thinking, oh, please put your knives away when you wash me, you know. <laughs> but uh, so this was MacGyver, yeah. Uh, and it was, his name was you know, MacGyver, and he was very good. I mean, I, oh, you know, you always have got these preconceived 
Sometimes ideas and things and, oh, the people helped me there. But, you know, it was so, so special. And the next, you know, if you go on there, my dear doctor, <laughs> friend who was there every day, um, he even one Sunday said, okay, today we're going to do a braai. <laughs> and there you can see him, he's... Uh, had a braai. I was lying in bed and he was doing a braai there and uh, the whole hospital was just smoke and, and, and I was like, oh, somebody is going to come and chase him away. But I mean, he's a doctor, you know, and, and every time a nurse comes into my room, I say, oh, a pondok. <laughs> but there were a lot of, a lot of people that, you know, if you go on to the next, uh, a lot of friends, a lot of family. I will, you can, you can guess whose friends and whose family <laughs> um, came around. And then, of course, my favorite nurse and the assistant, uh, um, you know. And then a lot of people came around. And I know a lot of people that are sitting here came around praying with me. Uh, every Wednesday, I had a special visit. On a Sunday, I had a special visit, you know, uh, from uh, Hanelore and, and Daryl always coming around. I knew on a Wednesday, and chocolates, and biltong, and oh, had a lovely time of prayer with Lionel. And, you know, a lot of people I know, uh, Ron and Donna, sitting here as well, you know, came around. We prayed, and it was just so, so special. And... The messages I received and the prayers, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Uh, you know, it was just so, you suddenly feel so, wow, you feel the family suddenly coming. It was uh, so special uh, to have it. I see uh, as you and Heidi up there. And, uh, you know, I know I'm forgetting people that, that were all there, but thank you so much. I just want to say Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your visits and, and messages. And it was just uh, amazing. And uh, uh, last week, Friday, the next, the next picture is my last picture. I, I threw my crutches away and my dog thought, okay, he has to bring them back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, so I could, uh, I could, I'm standing here this morning. Yeah, it's. I'm still in there, in there you know, <laughs> thank you. And, but, you know, as I lay on my bed there, it, it was as if this be still and know that I'm God it just came into to my mind. And I, I must be honest, I first had to check, where, where is that again in Scripture? And, you know, I, I couldn't remember. It. It's Psalm 46, you know, and as I was... I was going through Psalm 46, it just uh, suddenly a few things just jumped out at me, and I want to share them this morning, and before I get, come to verse 10, uh, which is, be still and know that I'm God, but, uh, you know, um, when it says in verse 1, the Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, a very present you know, God is very present. You know, it, it was just God's presence, as I read it, was became so, so tangible. You know, so in that moment, I said, you know, even in this accident, I thought, as I, you know, you always think, oh, where's God in this, you know? But, you know, I, on the ground there, first, the first thing is somebody's praying for me, you know, the very presence of God in our life. You know, sometimes I've heard people say, you know, when we do this and we do that, God shows up. No, we have to show up. God is very present, omnipresent. You know, he's present everywhere. And I think I can talk, I could talk about a lot of things this morning here. But to know that our God is present here, 
this morning. You know, it's just, it should, it's, should overwhelm us. God is here. You know, we really come here this morning not to meet with God. We come here to meet with one another. God was here already. <laughs> he was here. It was at home. He was in our car. He's, you know, I mean, so often we would, I, I think if we would ask ourselves, do we believe God is omnipresent? We'd say, of course, yes. But so quickly when things happen, you know, we say, I don't feel God. As if our feelings are an indication of God's presence. God's presence, he is very present. You know, and in the psalm when it says, it almost talks about natural disasters, you know. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea and the waters roar and foam and says God is present. He's very present. Even at times when I don't feel, I don't feel it. God is present, very present here this morning. And it should excite us, that should overwhelm us. And in verse, um, in verse 4 it says, and it's a kind of the second thing that just came while I was, one morning actually, I was in, in bed. You know, I, I'm not used to sleeping too long. You know, I, I sometimes, yeah, and this, that morning again, I was there at like half past four, you know, I'm lying in bed and wow, you know, then... I start, you know, start reading God's word. And in this, this verse, verse 4, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. You know, the city of God makes glad this. What's the city of God? It's, the, it's Jerusalem, you know. I mean, it speaks here about... There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And it's actually, as I looked into this, this verse a bit more, and I went in and studied a bit, and there is no river flowing through Jerusalem. You know, is, is, is he talking about something that doesn't exist? You know, it's, uh, is, there, is there something else that is spoken about here? You know, and I, and suddenly that morning there, you know, my phone, a message comes on my phone, I think it was five o'clock. I remember still, and I thought, you know, you have a look, five o'clock in the morning, a message, what would that be, you know? And I see it's from a friend of mine called uh, Ruben Petrus. And, uh, and Ruben was... Uh, when I, I worked many years at Racing Uranium, you know, and Ruben was a, at first he was an operator, operating equipment, and then he was a, a foreman. And when I, I was the, the manager there in, in the mining area, um, Ruben was the training foreman. He trained people, and then he left, and now he's pastor Ruben Petrus. And Reuben, when I, you know, when I see him and I ask him, Reuben, how can it? He says, I loop on water. You know, it's just that, that, you know, just that excitement. And this morning, that morning when I, I got that, I, I saw, ah, it's just a song that he sent me. And I listened to the song. And it was uh, called Ancient Words. You know, the song Ancient Words, and it's, uh, just want to read to you, part of that song says, words of life, words of hope, give us strength to help us cope in this world. Wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me, changing you. And it was as if a river of life was there that morning. As I read that, there is a river. It's almost in my heart, it was like the Holy Spirit river was, was just flooding my heart. It was like, Lord, are you speaking about a river? 
that only you can, can, uh, you can give. Where there is no river, you make a river. You have, you, Lord, give that river of life, that river that only the Holy Spirit can, can put in our life. And it, as I was just lying there, it just, just overwhelmed me, you know, that the Lord will, will make a river where there is no river. And uh, it just, then, you know, it, it talks about, the psalm talks about a, a, you know, nations in uproar and kingdoms fall and the Lord lifts his voice and the earth melts. And then comes that amazing uh, verse that says, The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And in, you know, Martin Luther, when he wrote a, a, a song uh, in German, Eine feste Burg ist unser Gott. You know, a, eine feste Burg is a fortress that cannot be moved. It is, it's solid. And this verse the God of Jacob is our fortress, eine feste Burg. It cannot be moved, you know, and it, it needs to sink in. After that verse is that first time where it says, Salah, you know, um, let it sink in. A mighty fortress, a, a, a fortress is our God. And then in verse eight and nine, you know, as I read it, I thought, what? It says, come and see what the Lord has done. And it's almost as if the psalmist says, uh, just look, get a perspective of what the Lord has done. Reflect on what the Lord has done. You know, as I also am lying there and I'm thinking, you know, I can... Think now about what happened to me and so on, but reflect, get perspective of what the Lord has done. You know, and I, if you go to that next uh, slide, we were um, a week or, no, it's two weeks or so ago, it might be even three weeks ago now, after all that time lying there and as I got on my crutches and I had a chauffeur, we drove into a tosh, to a Tosha pan for that long weekend at the end of May there. And, uh, we, you know, when I saw this, uh, was an Askaya? Vulture. A vulture, you know, we took a photo of this vulture flying above and, and the giraffe. And I kind of thought, you know, they must have good perspective. You know, they must like, they can see the perspective. But then... When I reflected, I thought, you know, it's with us, at least with me, I got more a perspective when I was down, you know, on my bed and was lying there. I got more of a perspective than when I was up, you know, although I know we always say we must go on the mountain to get a perspective. But you know, with us, we must humble ourselves. Our life, sometimes it gets too busy. We get so distracted with things that we sometimes have to come down to get perspective. You know, and it was just, I was just reflecting on that saying, Lord, I've actually got more perspective now than I had before. <laughs> you know, and it's, and is it not? Is it not strange that, that sometimes we, it's almost the opposite that needs to happen, that we can get perspective? And I was, I was, uh, I read some time ago about a, a sermon that a, an American uh, preacher, philosopher, theologian, um, Jonathan Edwards, when he was only 18 years old, and I, when I read this, I thought, Oh, he had 
quite a perspective. You know, he, he spoke about bad things and good things and the best things. And when he reflected on bad things, he said, bad things will turn out good. In, in those that love the Lord, all things will work together for good that love the Lord. He said, bad things will turn out good. Good things cannot be taken away. Our justification, our salvation cannot be taken away. We are adopted into God's family. It cannot be taken away. And the best things are yet to come. You know, just bad things will turn out good. Good things cannot be taken away and best things are yet to come. And then we come to that, that verse. Be still and know that I am God. And that was to me just that stop. You know, be still and know that I am God. And is it not strange? Well, it's not strange, but is it not, um, you know, in the psalm, it's almost like a third person speaking and then suddenly God intervenes himself. And says, be still and know that I am God. It's uh, stop striving, stop rushing, stop running around. Be still and know that I am God. And I like I reflected on that and thought, what does that really mean? You know, what does it really mean? Be still and know that I am God. Must I now stop everything that I'm doing or stop? And I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. You know, if, if, if I don't ride my bicycle or I don't drive my car and I just leave it standing and for a few months and I want to ride it again, it's something is broken. You know, it's kind of... Vehicles and cars, they seem to break when they stand, you know. They need to be driven. Sometimes even we know like with diesel engines, they don't, don't want to just idle. They want to do work, you know. They want to work. But if we work, if we drive ourselves all the time, drive ourselves, we race our life, we ruin it. We seem to... Uh, just drive, even sometimes, I must say, just that activity of just activity, 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 and we do not get still before God. We, we kind of drift. We drift away. And God does not shout to make himself heard. He says, be still and know that I am God. You know, there's something wrong when we become so new, so used to noise, whether it's a telephone in our hand or a telephone on our ear or a television that one needs to look at all the time to, because we, what do we do else? You know, what, uh, what, uh, I'm bored, you know, <laughs> but to come into God's present presence, he almost, he commands it. It's not a suggestion, you know. He says, be still and know that I am God. You know, that we stop our futile efforts in dealing with things that are in his domain. And realize that our God is sovereign, faithful, omnipresent, omnipotent, unfailing. We have to stop. Now, I... But I realized after a short while, I, I thought, okay, what, like as I said earlier, you know, it, does it mean I need to now stop and sit and not get out there and um, engage with people, uh, do my work diligently at work? No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that I need to withdraw, need to stop. God actually tells me to starting to realize that 
you know, and I, I reflected on these things that I just listed there, that he is present everywhere, not just in my room there. He's present at my work. He's present at, at, uh, in my family. In, he's present here. And there's a river that can flow out of me when I engage with people, I, when I... When I get in contact with people at work, but that I can know that he is my fortress. He's my my manifesto book. <laughs> um, and that I can behold, I can behold what he has done. I can reflect and, and be still and know that he is God in every moment. Yes, you know, even as I came here this morning, you know, there were a lot of stop signs along the road. A lot of these signs stop. But if I had stopped there and stayed there, I would have not been here this morning. You know, I had to stop and I had to move again. And that's the same as, as, I, as I reflect on this, be still and know that I am God. We have to get still before God. Spend time with him. If, if we want to be effective in our journey, we have to stop, spend time with God, and then go on and know that he's present. And you know, I, I then thought the word stop, and I, I know I'm playing maybe a little bit, bit around with just the word stop here. If, and I st I looked at that word stop and I said maybe after, after um, JP spoke to me or sent me a message and said we don't want to stop, you know. I said maybe we want to start. You know, we want to start trusting, obeying and praying. You know, I looked at these, these three words and I want to just end off with that. You know, trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Is that not what the scripture in, in Proverbs says? And trust is an action. It is not something where we sit back and, and, uh, and do nothing. Trust is something where we have to step out. We have to trust the Lord. I think faith is in unutterable trust in God you know that's why I'm linking this trust and faith and the scripture says you know show me your faith without deeds that I show you uh, my faith and what I do so trust is something where we step out in in the full knowledge that our God is with us he's present He's our fortress. So I just realized after spending some time there in what does it mean to be still and know that he is God. I need to trust him. I need to trust the Lord in, in my work. I need to trust him with my family. I need to trust him with the interactions I have with people, with people that come along my path. But obey. You know, the, the word obedience, you know, if there is one thing I think that will bring dishonor to God is not obeying Him. You know, He says to obey is better than sacrifice. You know, we need to delight ourselves in obeying God and he will give you give us our desires he will give us desires in our heart that will cause us to to be able in every situation to obey him you know in obedience I got this old book here sorry it looks all my books look old <laughs> sorry um, but it's a it's a book um, by Oswald Chambers, you know, and I, I read um, something here. 
that I want to just to read to you about obedience. It says, um, God's end is to enable me to see that He can walk on the chaos of my life now. His end is the process. And I know it may just hang in there, you know, like His end, God's end is the process that I can see Him walking on the waves, no shore in sight, no success, no goal in sight, just the absolute certainty that it is all right because I see Him walking on the sea. It's the process, not the end, which is glorifying God. If we have a further end in view, if our end of our obedience, if we've got something else in view, we do not pay sufficient attention to the immediate present. And now the words that I think just make obedience such a such a real thing. But if we realize, if we realize that obedience is the end, then each moment as it comes is precious. If we realize obedience to God is, is the end, not we, oh, we do the obedience so that we can get to the end. No, the, the obedience in every situation that we find ourselves in, that is the precious moment that we can enjoy God's presence with us. We often have this, we, we want to do these things you know, and then some things may not work out the way we thought they, they would. But let us be obedient to the Lord. He says, if you love me, you obey my commands. And I love the, what Mother Teresa once said, you know, when people want to just, why want to just do things? She said, you know, if you want to change the world, go home. And love your family you know it's and often that is that is what what we need to in our obedience need to also hear you know there at home where situations may not always be perfect let us be obedient in that moment because then it becomes precious in in God's sight the obedience to obey is better and sacrifice you know and I I was just so reminded Ellen uh, I don't know where Ellen is sitting now but uh, was saying to me the other day you know the journey with God is really what what uh, what he is experiencing in his life and I, I thought this is what obedience is about being obedient in that journey as we as we go uh, forward in our uh, in our walk and then prayer I mean what can we say about prayer you know the scripture says pray continually give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus do not quench the spirit prayer is is an effort you know when we go into our secret place and we shut the door the most difficult thing is to pray, you know, and it's, we have to shut the door on our emotions. We have to shut the door on distractions. We've, it's easy to shut the door, the physical door, but it's sometimes much more difficult to shut the door on those distractions, on those wandering thoughts. You know, if we want to keep our soul fit to manifest the life of the Son of God in us, we need to pray and we need to really pray that and, and and I think sometimes we think with prayer we're just asking God and I think the Bible is almost like saying that prayer is getting to know him be still pray and know that I am God get into his presence get to know him 
You know, the scripture also says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. You know, we need to wrestle in prayer. We need to wrestle in prayer, not wrestle with God because he kind of puts joints out of, you know, like Jacob felt. We need to, he, he experienced, you know, we need to wrestle in prayer. Start to trust. The word stop now, I want to make it like a, almost two things. One is stop, reflect, be still and know that he is God and start, start to trust, put your full trust in him, obey and continue to pray, drench it with prayer, drench your life with prayer. You know, um, it's been the psalmist, you know, and, and it's just an experience that I've had that sometimes when you have a, a, an experience in your life or so and you really spend time in God's word, that it becomes alive to you. It, be, suddenly, it becomes alive. And, and it, this psalm now, I don't think I will ever forget. You know, it's just been a, a something new, and I I want to spend more time to be be more still before Him, trust Him in in my my activities of life, but be still in those activities as well, reflecting and getting a perspective, getting a new perspective of of what God has done. Yeah, I, I encourage you this morning and if you, uh, with, with these words of Psalm 46, that if, if you need to become still before God, then I would, I would just really encourage you to do that because something, a new river where there is no river, you might think there is no river, will come stir up within you as you trust him as you obey him as you as you pray and as you call upon him let us pray lord i want to just thank you for your word that is alive your word is alive lord we know it as we read it as we as it says lord that the lord almighty is with us God of Jacob is our fortress. Lord, we thank you that you are, are our fortress. Thank you that you, Lord, you, you are waiting for us wherever we are. Lord, we can call upon you wherever we are. And this morning, Lord, we just call upon you in a, in a fresh way, Lord. We, we say, Lord, we want to be still before you. We want to be still and know that you are God. Lord, that we can truly um, be the disciples that you have called us to be. Lord, that that river of life can flow out from us as you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that is a stamp that you have put upon us. That we are yours. That we are yours. That no one, no one can take us from you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.